station assistant Jackie's in at the deep end. There's a fight going on off there. There's a fight? Is that from one? And there's a suicide attempt at Victoria. He, he just got down on the track and kneeled down in front of me. I thought I was going over him, but this one's got quite good brakes on it. London Underground is the world's oldest metro system. Built in the late 1800s, early 1900s, the network now strains to cope with the pressure of a billion passengers a year. That's over three million journeys a day. Four weeks ago, mother of six Jackie Blanchard had only used the tube a handful of times. Now fully trained as a customer service assistant, she has her work cut out for her. This is it, this is day one. I'm in the King's Cross area. It's very nerve-wracking. King's Cross St Pancras is the busiest station and the biggest interchange on the entire tube network. Six different lines converge and over 200,000 people use the station every day. It's getting busy, isn't it? I'm really useless. I had this really weird dream last night that I was on a platform and this farmer got off the train with two cows. <laughs> I was going, you can't come on here with two cows, mate. <laughs> As the rush hour builds, Jackie has to deal with her first problem. A train is stuck in the Piccadilly line platform. Oh, the train's been held here. Oh dear. This train is held up? Why is that? I think they've got a problem at Leicester Square. There's a train. What the driver is saying is, is not. Uh. Con Kenny can't actually confirm this, but there's a. Def it could be a defective train at uh, Leicester Square. Oh, right. So this train's been held here. Station supervisor Paul Harper is called to the scene. Okay, I'm on my way. This is my headache, my nightmare, yeah. Come out now, keep an eye on it, see how things go. With over 1,000 people on the packed train, there's some bad news from the line control centre. I've had a computer, it's just come up that they've suspended the westbound Piccadilly line. The service is temporarily suspended, so the staff must work quickly. They close the platform gates to prevent dangerous overcrowding. So just let people out? Yeah, anyone when the trains come off, yep. we'll let them out this one and that one. If it gets too bad, we'll have to clear the platform and try and get people to use alternative routes at the moment. Not this way, madam, please. It's going to be a long journey home for these travellers. You have to take a bus, madam, and I'm only training, so I don't know which But if you go up to the top, somebody would help you with what bus to get onto. What are you doing? All right. The Piccadilly line may be out of action, but it's the central line that's hit the front page. A train has derailed at White City, and the central line has been completely suspended between North Acton and Marble Arch. It's the fourth derailment on the underground in 16 months, and all eyes are on troubleshooter Bob Thorogood. Two sets of wheels derailed uh, over a set of points as it was approaching the westbound platform. There were no injuries amongst the customers or staff. Having said that, I've no doubt that a lot of customers had a very unhappy journey home this evening. Bob's under pressure from all angles. Uh, I, I'm not going to make it yet. You better, you better have something to eat. I meant to phone you a little while ago, but I've got, I've got tied up in it. That was my wife. My dinner's just gone in the dog. Yeah. After 43 years, she's understanding, yeah. Last year, a derailment closed the entire central line for almost two months. The underground's emergency response unit are trying to re-rail the train and establish what happened. They've jacked the train up to slide those wheels back over the, the rails. And what they've done now is they fitted that blue skate underneath one of the wheels that came off to lift it up and stop that wheel turning on the rail and therefore allow us to get it back to the depot. But obviously, once we move the train, if we find all sorts of things that we can't at the moment see, that might change the game. Rush hour is still disrupted at King's Cross, but finally, there's some good news for supervisor Paul Harper. Now, that train on platform 
Looks like we're going to get it through service again. They've got the defective one moved from Leicester Square. We should get away with it. Keep moving down to the platform, please. Keep moving down, please. Keep moving down, please. That was good that teamwork. Was teamwork. Yeah. 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 I hope that don't happen too often. Frequently, I'm afraid. Does it really? Uh, I think that's done of the world of good, probably. She's thrown her in right at the deep end, isn't it? She couldn't have had a better day for it today. Well, that was a rush hour over with. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that's the last of that. Do you me, imagine doing that every day. Oh, well, I better get used to it, I suppose. Because I didn't know what to do. I hope it's like six weeks' time. I'm really slick and really cool at what I'm doing. But, but it just seems so far away. I just feel so lost. <laughs> but there's no rest for Bob as his team try to move the damaged train. All clear? Yeah, all clear. Everybody's aware that we're about to recharge current, yes? Yeah. OK. I expect there'll be a bit of uh, squeaking and grinding. It'll only move very slowly, but uh, we'll move it in OK. Come on, train, move! Moving it into the platform would be good, guys. Go on, baby. Go on, baby. Uh, oh, that's how you living over. Make sure he gets right in. We want to clear this track at the back. Turn going to the normal stop him up. Bob now has a chance to assess the damage to the track. After the last tube derailment on the northern line, it took four months to fully repair the rails. It uh, doesn't look uh, that there is major uh, damage to, to the track form there, and um, we're going to be able to recover the situation and uh, operate uh, a near normal service on the central line tomorrow morning. Luckily for Bob and his team, it looks like disaster has been averted, and the central line will be back in service for tomorrow's 640,000 customers. It's Saturday. And at Seven Sisters, 10,000 football fans are arriving for a Premiership match between Tottenham and Arsenal. Keeping these bitter rivals apart on the tube is the unenviable task of the British Transport Police. This fixture is always a high-profile event due to historical dislike between both sets of supporters. There's some intelligence to indicate that some of the risk supporters may be carrying weapons. Don't want anybody getting isolated, wandering off by themselves. Make sure you, you're with somebody at all times. PCs Craig Hare and Paul Hendra are on the lookout for potential troublemakers before the match starts. We've just been informed that a Section 60 has been authorised, which basically gives us the power to stop and search people to look for weapons, because we believe there may be pre-planned disorder prior to the match. We're looking for knives, we're looking for baseball bats, you're looking for pens, you're looking for concealed weapons, knuckle dusters, anything, absolutely anything. No weapons were found on these fans. Out of a possible 30,000 people, you've managed to search two. How was that meant rush. to stop? Your words to me, but don't rush. Take your time. You can't have it all. Absolutely, mate. No, Thank no, you. you're well, quite right. Thank you. But with thousands of rival fans about to descend on Seven Sisters, the day is far from over. At Seven Sisters, the British Transport Police are waiting for Tottenham fans to return from their clash with rivals Arsenal. The game has been drawn, but the result means Arsenal have won the Premiership. Passions are running high. Although the game has finished, for some fans, the match is not over. There's still a thousand Spurs tomorrow hanging around the stadium. Yeah, and they've been cordoned off and segregated by the police to keep them apart, so we've still got quite a lot of people to come back from the station. Right. And there's been a little bit of sporadic disorder around the ground and surrounding streets, just people running around really. So we don't know where those people are going, whether they're going to go to Tottenham Hill Station or whether they're going to come down to Seven Sisters. So until the um, stadium and the surrounding streets are completely clear of fans, we need to keep the presence at the station just in case they turn up here.
Even with the news that thousands of Arsenal supporters have just been escorted to nearby Tottenham Hale Station, the Seven Sisters team still can't relax. We've got 2,000 Arsenal fans I've just got on uh, to um, Tottenham Hale. And obviously the train's going to come past here. We've got a lot of Spurs fans on the platforms down here. So if the train stops, it's a potential flashpoint for disorder. So we're going to go down on the platforms. It's not actually meant to be stopping. The train's meant to be non-stopping. So we're just going to make sure that that happens. Police regularly use the underground system to keep rival fans segregated. Move along the platform, please. Dedicated trains are used as movable crowd control barriers. It's a non stop, it's the one with all of the parcel on it. The platform is packed with Tottenham fans as the train full of Arsenal fans pulls in. The sergeant there caught somebody kicking the train, the Arsenal, what the Arsenal supporters were on. I mean, you saw them as they were on the platforms, banging the drawer, trying to provoke them. I think if the doors had opened, we might have had a serious public order situation on our hands. The crowds have dispersed, but the police are in no hurry to leave. Wait, 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 there's another one in a, there's another one in a minute. I'm taking you away from the train, mate. It's an yeah, offence to stick your foot in the drawer, all right? Is it really? Yes, it is. Well, you'll get on the next one, won't you? There's plenty more trains, mate. Get on the next one. Get on the next one. For most Londoners, Saturday nights are a time to relax and let their hair down. But for underground staff, it can be a very different story. A third of all staff assaults happen on Friday and Saturday evenings. It's now been a month since Jackie Blanchard began work at the underground's busiest station, King's Cross. It's been a real eye-opener. Four weeks into it, and it's a lot harder than you think. It's, it's a lot harder than you think. To be honest, I was shocked at how rude people are. I was shocked. I just, I couldn't believe it. I think it's incredible. I mean, whoever said the British people don't complain must have been a hermit in a cage because he just obviously doesn't get out here because they do nothing but moan and whinge. We're going to Hammersmith on the west end anyway. They come every minute, these trains. Every three minutes, these trains come. Sorry, you're in the world. Hang on, mate. I'll help you. There you go. There you. Really nice people turn into, you know, just mad men or women. They're just mad. <laughs> Foaming. Aggression. Station supervisor Paul Harper has been keeping an eye on Jackie's progress. The ones that come here do get a culture shock, I think. Well, it can be quite pleasant, it can be a nightmare. I don't think she's had any major problems yet. Have you, Jackie? Yeah, no major problems yet, have you? No, I mean, since you've been here. No major problems, nothing major. Pardon? I got called that a couple of times, and a cow, actually. That's why you have to be tough-skinned, I suppose. I don't mind that, anyway. For four hours of it, and you just... You begin to think that there's no kindness in the world again. <laughs> no kindness. <laughs> At Edgware Road, duty manager Andy Hogg is in charge of trains and drivers on the Circle Line. Edgware Road there's been an attempted suicide, or one under, at Victoria. The driver has taken the train out of service and is on his way back to base. Can you bring him in at platform three and hold him? Um, I don't know if he's going to be fit, in a fit state to carry on. At the moment, we've got no spares. He's desperately trying to put one away early and get a driver back, because that's going to completely shaft us for the night if he wants to leave the train here. Some drivers, it affects. Um, quite severely, some drivers, it's nothing, it's part of the job. He 
he's running the train empty, which gives you a, a, a fair indication that he's, he's shaken up. We may have to get him a cab and send him home. His mental health is my first priority. For this driver, it's not the first time it's happened. It never rains, but it pulls. How are you feeling? Very shaky, yeah? yeah. Just brought it all back to the previous one under. From the wonder. OK. Right, what I'll do is I'll run, I'll run down with you down to, yeah. to Hammer. Off we go. It was two thirds of the way around, and I was slowing the train down anyway because I never come in there fast. And he just looked at me and he just got down. And I, I've, so you actually saw him climb down? He wasn't I, already on the track when no, you actually came into the no, platform? No, it was about from here here to there when I saw him, and he just looked at me and he, he, he just got down on the track and kneeled down in front of me. Of course, straight away in an emergency, and, and I literally stopped about 10 to 15 foot from him. I thought I was going over him, but this one's got quite, one of the better ones has got good brakes on it. I called straight into the controller, called out a mayday, got the traction current discharged, and just as the controller confirmed to me, the young kid put both his hands on the positive and negative rail and like that. He must have been, I reckon, 12 to 16. He was only young. He got down on track and when he didn't fry, he started crying. Amazing now, just take deep breaths, calm down, try relax. Let's get the train away and we'll get back to Edgeborough Road and we can just sit down and, and have, a, have a cup and have a chat about it, okay? I've been a driver myself and I've been in the situation that Alan's in. Um, it's, it's a bit of a shock. I mean, I've had three platform strikes where I've actually hit people actually on the platform itself. Um, and I think the, the, the shock comes because it's instantaneous. There's no prior warning, it just happens and you've got to deal with it straight away. Especially if someone jumps in front of you. Luckily, Alan was, was, was on the board today and he managed to, to apply all the brakes and stop the train. But we had situations where people jump in front and there's, there's nothing the driver can do and you feel completely impotent to do anything about it. The only thing you do is, is hit the brakes and just look away. But there's no let up for Jackie. There's a fight going on on platform number one. It's a fight? Platform one? Platform one? I don't mind drunk people, but the younger ones are more aggressive. and I don't like that. I don't like the aggression that comes out in them, and they're unpredictable then. Oh, funny. Why are you just being assaulted on a train, Okay. Line? Do you want a first aider? Yeah, I can be. Who's just assaulted on a first aider, train? mate? What? Do you want a first aider, yeah, sir? I think... actually felt sorry for the girls. They were very shaken. People get very aggressive if they've had too much to drink. You only have to look at them the wrong way, and, and that's, that's what happens. Hey, so <laughs> Any train, mate? Be good, take care. Do you want some help? <laughs> I just didn't feel confident at the back, keeping the train, the train in service, especially after what's happened. It's, you know, the shock as well, and the majority of the passengers were all right. But as I say, there was a couple that come up to me and said, well, why are you taking a train out of service? Like, and I tried explaining to them, why me? <laughs> Some train operators never drive again after a one under. Andy is keen to get driver Alan Jacks back in the cab. My, my main concern now is basically just Alan's welfare, to calm him down, initially get all the information out of him so that we can write the full report. You see Andy that for us? Get any more details off of you? He won't carry on the rest of his duty. I mean, I wouldn't let him carry on the rest of his duty because I think he's too shaken up. I've seen people never drive a train again. Um, other people wouldn't even have detrained their passengers, would just carry on. It all depends on the individual person. After having your first one under, which was five years ago, even now, when I come into platforms and you see someone right on the edge, you're thinking, is he or isn't he? You know what I mean? Yep. Sign your life away. Yeah. They had to drag him off the track. He didn't come off of his own accord. They, they had to drag him off the track. And that's when he started shouting and nollering and waving his arms and everything, so... Yeah. OK. The district line controller and the DOM were incredibly impressed with what you did. And from what you told me and from what they've told me, it was only because you got the, got the mayday out quick. 
that when he actually did touch the juice rail, he's actually got the traction current discharge. If he did delayed, he could well be dead. Mm -hmm. So um, on their request, I'm going to be writing you up for commendation, okay, for your actions, on your swift actions, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's only your swift actions that these guys are still with us, okay? Mm -hmm. One thing to remember, I don't think this is something that's going to eat at you and grate away at you, because mm -hmm. I don't think you're that sort of person. Knowing, knowing you personally, I don't think you're that sort of person. But if it does, don't suffer in silence. There are people here to help you, and we want to help you because we want to, re you know, we want to get you back driving trains. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get your cab and get your own. Okay. <laughs> We've got right. now Alan, who's um, suffering post-traumatic stress. He could be off for a couple of weeks, we never know. I've now been tied up for two or three hours, and I've got to write the report on it and the paperwork. We had a train that had to go empty from Victoria right the way around to uh, Hammersmith without passengers, which cost money. So that adds up to, well, you do the, you do the maths, several thousand pounds worth of cost, um, all because this guy jumped, in, jumped down in uh, front of a train and wanted to kill himself. At King's Cross, the last trains of the night are about to depart. I was really expecting it to be bad. It's been OK. I mean, there's, there has been some ugly moments, but they didn't involve me, so, <laughs> so I feel I've got off lightly. That's how I feel, I've actually got off lightly. I was so excited that I got this job at London. I was so excited. And now it's like reality check time. I don't want it to get me down. That, that is one of the things that worries me, is that I'm just going to end up some sort of old cynic, you know. I don't want to end up like that. I want to be overcome it. I want to overcome it. After a tough start, Jackie has settled in and is now looking forward to a long career on the tube. Little update there, madam, on how Next time, project. customers reach breaking point at Brixton. Basically, it feels like this station will never, ever, ever be finished. And a surprise visitor at Canary Wharf. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Nice, Hi. Very welcome to Canary Wharf station. I think I need a cigarette now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>